So let's hop right into it. Let's take a look at the S&Ps here. Um, <clears throat> you know, we saw that big gap up early in the week. And uh, we've basically, you know, slowly grinded higher since that large gap um, earlier in the month, kicking off the month here. And now we're sort of stalling out. Now, we are, we just came out of the Friday employment numbers. Uh, they were announced this morning at 830. Let's take a look at our smaller time frames to get an idea here. Here is the market. So we can see that we are gapping down. This was uh, yesterday's close. We are gapping down uh, probably about 10 to 12 handles here. As it stands right now, this is pre-market, um, just to give you an idea. So the market is gapping down this morning, and I'm sure taking a lot of, a lot of stocks down with it. Uh, uh, S&P is, like I said, down around 12, probably about 10 to 12 handles here. Um, not totally unexpected. Let's go back to the daily chart. You know, we, we've come pretty far pretty fast. And, and uh, I think Scott said it best yesterday, and I'm going to take a line from his. Generally, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a good trending market, you want to you want to escalate up. You want to, you know, go up and base and go up and base and go up and base. So it kind of has the feel of, you know, a stair step up and base and up and base and that type of action. Right. And that's really healthy, you know, tradable, um, good trending type of action. What we had really happen over the last couple of sessions was really more of an elevator, elevator up. And the elevator up trade, you know, as much as it's great in the moment, can also work out not so favorably when that elevator stops going up because it creates, there's really no support underneath from which, you know, to hold it from, from dropping right back down. So be very, very careful here. We've been in a strong tape this week. I suspect, you know, we might see some upward bias on this gap down to try and come up and fill the gap. But it is still, like I said, you know, in, in midday calls and prior morning calls, it is still an active traders environment. This is not a trending environment. This is not an environment for those that have, you know, huge macro, you know, uh, expectations. It really is a shorter term um, active traders environment. So if you can, you know, understand the short term technicals, there's 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 great opportunity in this market um, for both the long side and, you know, even the short side. So let's take a look at some stocks here. We're going to start with stocks that actually have, have performed very, very well uh, with the market. You can see Apple. Apple, obviously, is uh, a staple. We did get through that 590 level. Um, I actually, you know, I thought we were probably going to head lower here, but I was proven wrong by the uh, by the market. We did bust through that 585, 590 level, and now we're back to uh, almost into that area where we had that last earnings gap. You recall um, last earnings announcement? We, you know, Apple sold off fairly hard. They announced we gapped up really big uh, right there, and then we went into another free fall over the next month or so. Um, so now we're back in, you know, earnings, I think are about in two weeks. Uh, the market's back to those, you know, earnings announcement levels where I think it's probably going to have a tough time. This, you know, this is a pretty big move. We went from 565 all the way to 514 yesterday in a matter of, you know, three or four, uh, four or five trading days, really four trading days, um, that elevator straight up type of trade. And we can see it much, much more clearly. If you look at the hourly, which, you know, gives you a better uh, idea of, you know, we just basically, we bottomed here at 565, we gapped up and we just never really looked back, not even really much of a pullback. So be careful here uh, about being, about chasing price and being a buyer for those that, you know, are familiar with my, you know, my, my philosophies towards trading and my approaches, you never chase price. Don't chase price. Even if, even if it goes higher and you, you know, you're, it will, a good trade will give you a chance to get in. It will pull back. It will set back up. So don't chase, you know, these prices as you're taking on a lot of risk uh, in these levels, especially with the market. As turbulent as it is, jobs report really uh, underperforming. I think the expectation was 100,000. We came in at 80,000. So another, you know, very, very weak looking uh, jobs report. So the market, again, can be violent. It can move violently. That's the kind of tape we're in. You have to respect it and, and you know, know how to trade it accordingly. Um, but Apple, you know, still a strong stock, very good week. And we're going to look for some sort of, you know, consolidation or controlled pullback here for another buy setup uh, in, the, in the coming days or, or weeks ahead. Moving on, just a couple stocks that I wanted to highlight. PCYC, uh, really just a monster mover here. Um, really not even pulling back, sitting at highs. This looks like it, again, wants to try and, you know, breakthrough highs, prior highs here, actionable trade for those that are nimble um, for a quick, you know, cash flow type of trade will be through these highs. This right now stands at about 5940. 
Um, so keep an eye on that level for an actionable trade. Um, Google, a stock that is underperformed, you know, still in a downtrend. When I say downtrend, a downtrend is really a series of lower highs and lower lows. You know, you can see lower highs, you know, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, that type of thing. Now, we had a nice move here off these lows. We definitely built a tradable uh, bottoming type of pattern. You can see multiple touches here along this 560. And then the stock finally, you know, tips its hand when the market and, and now back up into resistance. Let's call this whole area to the left here resistance. So the stock flirting with an area of, you know, prior resistance, support resistance level around 600. Um, I wouldn't be a buyer here. Again, this is not the stock that's in an uptrend. This is a stock in a downtrend that, you know, saw a short term bounce. What it does from here really will be key. Again, if it wants to leg higher, like I said earlier, it's going to set back up, maybe give you a very controlled pullback and then we'll see higher prices, but we'll know that with more time. So keep an eye on that trade. Um, as it potentially develops. Another actionable trade, more in the VTF yesterday, uh, FIO. Not necessarily one on everybody's radar, not necessarily a strong stock here by way of, you know, looking at, you know, the downtrend that it's been in. But it popped out of the, you know, it popped out, built a nice base here. And uh, this is what we call a bull flag pattern. And it broke out yesterday. You can see good volume on that breakout. So there's probably going to be some traders looking for follow through here. Could we, you know, leg higher back up into this area? We, we definitely could. So keep an eye on that one for slightly higher prices as it, you know, built a nice base and came out yesterday. Um, and these are the type of trades that really some of the active traders have been sort of gravitating to. Um, just actionable, quick trade ideas with, you know, one to three day time horizons. Visa, another, you know, good looking chart. Um, Visa broke out above prior highs. Uh, and really there's been no stopping the stock as the market's been pretty violent. The stock really never saw much of a downdraft. And the second we ticked up, we were right back at prior highs and visa up at new highs. So keep an eye on visa basing above that 125 level here. A um, couple more days here and you might see another breakout. So another trade to keep an eye on to the long side and MasterCard MasterCard, you know, doesn't quite have the same luster that visa has, but it is starting to leg back uh, to prior highs and wouldn't surprise me if we did retest. Um, back into this 460 to 470 level. Um, so keep an eye on that. You know, a couple days here of consolidation might be, uh, it might be due. And then, you know, you could see, you know, another, another trade higher there. So a couple long trades to keep an eye on. And lastly, Whole Foods, a stock that I've been chirping about for a little while. Uh, it's built a nice base here. Again, sitting at highs. Another actionable trade would be through these highs. Um, again, you don't want to chase price, but keep an eye. These could result in like a nice, you know, one to two day, type of breakout trade above these highs, which right now stand at 97 and a quarter. So a couple trade ideas there in Expedia. Um, you know, we saw a little bit of a pullback. The pullback got bought. Now it's a question of, you know, maybe some more time, but uh, keep an eye on this chart as it is, is it is still in a, in a nice uptrend um, through that $50 mark or these prior highs here probably would give you another actionable trade. That's about 50 and a half. So keep an eye on Expedia again. Just sort of throwing out some ideas there for the active traders to keep an eye on, um, as it is a it, it is tough to you know make any bold predictions about the market. And I and to be quite honest, I don't think that's a that's that's a uh, that's a good way to trade this market. If you're only looking you know at the market and saying well you know if the market goes up I have to be long. Really look for actionable setups. That's really where people are making money. Not so much driven solely by the market. Obviously, if the market is strong and we start legging higher, a lot of these stocks are going to continue to break out. Um, and it, but if the market does fall apart, keep your eye on some stocks that have, you know, good constructive bullish patterns. Um, now, on the other side of the coin, let's look at the banks. We're going to start with Goldman. Goldman really underperforming. This is not a sign of a strong stock. You know, we saw a little bit of a pop here off the 90 level, uh, but this is nothing that gets me excited personally. Again, you have the tradable low here at 90, uh, yeah, about 90 and a half. Um, and we did, you know, we did, you know, rally up off that, but nothing, you know, substantial on the first downtick, you know, yesterday eliminated the prior two days. So, you know, banks to me are not, again, not where money flow is. And they, these look like, you know, but if the market starts to leg down, the banks are going to be the first ones to go lower. JP Morgan yesterday, um, you know, getting sold off a little bit. So keep an eye on these banks. JP Morgan had a nice bounce off this low. Um, now, you know, it, it could go either way here. I hate to sound non-definitive. I think it needs a little more time, but if I am looking at this, you know, realistically, 
you know, it, it, it probably should have broken out above this 36 and a half level, 37 level. And it didn't. We saw volume come up a little bit yesterday uh, as it ticked down. And there is room to go lower. We do have this, you know, low down here. So banks to me, not a sign of, of strength. And that's a, that could be a problem for this market. Uh, Wells Fargo, probably the best looking of all of them, but not necessarily a great trade into area of, uh, you know, prior resistance up here. Uh, but acts acts and performs better than some of the other uh, than some of the other larger banks. So we're going to keep an eye on, on that and we'll look at Bank of America as well. Uh, Bank of America looks like it topped out again here uh, about eight and a quarter um, and ticking down. So be very careful. These probably, you know, if they don't break down, they're probably going to stay in a very, very tight, choppy range for a little while. Um, and they may not be, you know, they may not present themselves as trades. So uh, I would I would probably be on the sidelines there. And lastly, we're going to look at some of the Chinese internets. This is Sina. Uh, Sina was a great trade for a long time for a lot of uh, a lot of traders. You can see, you know, um, you know, nice nice movement. But but for the better part of the uh, for the better part of the last you know year and change, it's really underperformed. Again, lower highs and lower lows. And as we look at it here, as the market you know flirts with you know breaking out or, or acting well, this stock's sitting on lows. So this is one for those that are looking for shorts. Um, or some weaker stocks. Um, so you have, you know, again, good, a good functional watch list. You're going to have good longs and good shorts. So you're prepared uh, depending upon market conditions. This is a stock that looks like it potentially wants to go lower. It's trying to hold this $50 mark, but nothing really that I would you know, gravitate to uh, unless you're looking for actionable shorts. Baidu, another underperformer. Uh, although it's caught a bid here the last couple of days with the market, you know, really no enthusiasm on this trade. Um, very little enthusiasm, really just a, a sort of a dead cap bounce, if you ask me. A lot of resistance up here around 120 in the low 120s. I don't think it's really ready for anything yet, but something on the radar is this whole sector, this Chinese internet group, uh, really, really lags. Uh, and to me, it looks like they want lower. It's just a question of time. So I'm trying to give you a perspective on both, you know, compelling longs and some compelling shorts. Uh, again, as the market sits at these high levels, um, it's going to be hard to be on the short side. Obviously, you want to focus on, you know, the money flow to the long side. And there are a bunch of good looking charts out there. You just need to pay attention and build a good quality watch list. That's where we come in, you know, as traders to help you do that, to give you trade ideas, to give you market analysis, uh, to give you a little, of, a little bit of encouragement and to also help you analyze when it's, you know, the risk on is, is necessarily greater um, to help you manage your, you know, capital accordingly. Um, you know, markets don't work in ways where we just go either we trend up or we trend down. And this market right now is a very, very choppy, uh, uh, you know, short term traders market. And if that's not your cup of tea and that's not your forte and it doesn't really work well for your risk tolerances or risk, pro you know, risk profile, step aside, you know, and, and there will be another day. There will be another month. There will be another, you know, cycle where it's either a good bull market or, in, you know, a potentially a bear market. So. You know, either way, there'll be uh, better trading environments if this is not your, like I said, not for you. Um, as always, tune into the VTF intraday. That's where opportunity lives, and that's where money's being made. I'm Laz. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you shortly on the virtual trading floor. Hello, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com, and one of the traders in the active mentor room for T3 Trading Group. What I'd like to do today is I'm really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit which in New York City, which is on Saturday, July 14th. We're going to have quite a few speakers today. There's going to be myself, Mike Lee, Evan Lazarus, Mark Sperling, Rob Smith, Rick Meadows. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people like myself. I'm going to pump you up. I'm going to guarantee you that. Other people like yourself who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take your trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't stress that. I know it's a Saturday, but you know what? I want you to be there to get excited and to be here. Prove to yourself how bad you want it. Show up and come down and get excited with us. Saturday, July 14th. Now, very quickly for the registration. All you have to do is register at t3live.com or be an existing member of t3live.com and you get two complimentary admission 
tickets for free. So all you have to do is go to t3live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission, two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Saturday, July 14th, here in New York City.